My name is Rebecca Tan, this is Making Up, and this is my review of the Lion Spring Parliament 2014. For those that aren't aware, um, the Lions is a faction within the Lorian Trust, which is where my character is based. And uh, Parliament is one of the two events we have each year that are called sanctioned events. This means they have a sanctioning officer from the LT to make them all official and therefore you get XP for them. In this case it went over a weekend, Friday night, all day Saturday and then up until about 3 or 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon. The plot line for this event was that there was a necromancer on one of the Lantian Islands. Uh, Lantia is the country that the lions are from, well living in, there's a long history and backstory to do with that but it's where we're from it's where my character is from um, we live on an island ring with um, 14 different islands on it and one of them was being played by a necromancer so we went to go deal with that and so over the course of the weekend we were able to find out some more information about the necromancer and use various means to then track her down and kill her it wasn't a 100% successful mission, as before she died she was able to release a death knight upon the world which seems to be heading roughly in the direction of where the first event of the year is being held. Not at all thinking that might be plot related and she's turning back up. No. And then most of the rest of the weekend was various people going off on linears and various interactions with different NPCs and decision making process for various bits and pieces going on over the event. If you follow any LARPers on Facebook or on Twitter or anything, you've probably seen links to what are called hot or nots. After each event, there are generally loads of people that were there giving you the hot nots breakdowns of stuff that happened. I was strongly considering coming and doing one for you guys in character. Um, I even brought my iPad, which is what I record on, with me to the event and left it in the hotel because we were staying in a hotel because it was March. I don't do any of that silliness. Um, after a particularly bad, uh, I think it was the spring event last year where I camped and the weather was awful and I spent the whole time being unable to move and about four hours sat waiting in the main hall to be fed because I was just like, I need to eat something before I go to sleep otherwise there won't be any food. I don't do that silliness anymore so I always make sure that I have somewhere nice and warm to sleep and unfortunately at this event there were only bunks available to monsters. Emma was being a monster, my lovely wife from the Dungeons and Drinkings channel. We've just done a collaborative video so hopefully that will be up soon. Uh, she went in monsters because she is a combat junkie and she did seem to really enjoy herself. I'm sure she'd put her own feedback up somewhere about her experiences in the monster room so I won't tread on that too much by trying to feed back stuff she said to me because I'll probably get it wrong anyway. Let's start with the knots because it's a nice and end on a happy note. My only real complaint of the weekend was the way certain things were started. Now I freely and 100 admit I do not like combat. I am a wuss, it hurts, I play squishy characters that heal other people and therefore Combat happening means there is a higher chance of me dying and also people hitting me with swords. I'm not really there for the combat. It's a reason for my character to be there, to patch people up. And it does ramp up the excitement and the adrenaline, which is great. But it's not something that is a huge importance to me at an event. I could quite happily do a whole weekend of just social stuff. As long as there was some interesting NPCs to talk to puzzles to solve and if there was combat for other people to go do so they're happy great but I don't need to be involved with it so it was a fairly big deal to me that there seemed to be weird statting of the combat um, now the event before this the Lions I feel like maybe it was condescending for because we lost a lot of high-ranking characters um, I believe all told 15 characters died out of a player base that wouldn't have been more than 50 um, at the event. I think probably closer to 40 that were there as players rather than monsters. So 
given the fact that a lot of people we lost were the big heavies of the faction, it's not surprising that the plot team decided to slap for a lower uh, base level. You know, it makes sense. If you're trying not to kill everybody, you want to give everyone a combat that is fun and challenging, but not going to kill everyone. Unfortunately, we had quite a few uh, high-ranking visitors that had come and joined us from various guilds and from what I can gather from talking to the people that were more involved in the combat side and that are have done their hot and knots already this seemed to really put a damper on things because either things were started way too low and therefore the guild NPCs just kind of walked all over it or when there were a few bits and pieces of guild plot it ended up being the only really they could go and deal with it. But it was also the first event for some members of the plot team, so hopefully it's constructive feedback that they'll be able to improve upon. I will say that my second knot is something that no one could have done anything about, and that is the weather. It's always a risk at a LARP event that the weather is just going to be awful. In this case, we had that awful thin rain that just gets through everything, and the field that we were on ended up getting really, really muddy and we actually lost a couple of players who, for various reasons, were not very well equipped to deal with that and ended up going home. Um, unfortunately, one of our friends was on crutches and it just, it just wasn't doable to have her wandering around in the mud on the crutches and things like the kitchen where they were serving the food being up a bunch of stairs and she just couldn't manage it. So it was a real shame to lose her and it was a, the sort of thing that made a dampener on the whole event because then things had to be moved around so we could go fight on areas that were safe and so if you weren't in the right areas you just weren't going to get a fight and you might have to spend five minutes crossing a really muddy bit of the area to get to where people were fighting and it just all became a bit of a slog. Obviously, with the rain, there was the fact it was really cold and I, like an idiot, did not pack enough layers because I went, I'm staying in a hotel. You know, it'll be fine. And I could really have done with two or three extra jumpers packed in there somewhere. Um, I did have a full set of thermals on. I had, you know, thermal socks. I had all sorts on and I think I could have done with a few more layers on top maybe a proper cloak um that was one of my hot because i'm actually working on a crochet cloak and was like they're doing it in character and that was amazing and got so many great comments but yeah more warm always more warm we were quite lucky at this event unfortunately when the faction had hired it and um, there was supposed to be another building that we could use it was probably going to be the main ic area but it had got demolished and we didn't find out to quite close to the event date but there was a little room because it's a it was a scout camp that we were using that was obviously like a little leader's room that had a little table and a little kitchen so there was like a tea room going on where people could sit and have a hot drink and get themselves warmed up if it got too bad can't really think of any other knots which shows that it was actually all said a really great event um i can't think of any other complaints i've got out of character in character there was some plot going on, so my character's not entirely impressed with some of the stuff going on, but it's being resolved. Um, one of the other players in my group had a big chunk of his background plot come in and hit him in the face repeatedly, and so there was some tense moments where I thought he was going to die. But whilst the character, I'm like, we're ball. As a player, I'm like, this is amazing, because he didn't die, and I helped him not die, and he's got awesome plot stuff going on. My only really other in-character complaint is I had to fall on the sword for something. My character is an encanter, which is someone that uses uh, magic that is based around ancestors. And within the faction, I've actually kind of become the go-to person. About a year ago, both myself and one of the other characters, Fog, became deputy encanters uh, for the whole faction. And I took all the ecumenical ancestry stuff and he took all the battle strategy kind of things because there are certain things encounters can do, for example, dismissing certain types of creatures that requires a lot of organisation on the battlefield because you have to get everyone to wedge up and form a line and um, pass power cards down and do everything to try and get enough forms of power to pop. 
something that's poppable. So we kind of got our role quite settled, we were getting on quite well, and then the person that was in charge of us uh, had to move along to a different position. And so for the last few events, the pair of them been going, I don't want it, I don't want the high counter position, do you want it? No, no, you should pick her. Oh, no, no, I don't know do any of this military stuff. You should pick him. And eventually, at the last year of the event, I had to turn around and go, yeah, if one of us is going to sit in the meetings and do all the talky stuff, it should probably be me. I will find it less irritating, and it means I don't have to stand out in the field in combat. So I've taken on the role of faction high encounter. A role I didn't particularly want any time in the next three or four years. As you know, I would have quite liked to have been trained up properly, but them's the breaks in LARP, characters die, people move on, and it's not always a something where you can have a straight line of someone being trained up into the role, which in some respects um, might suck for other players. You know, if there was a deputy pretty much being groomed and it meant you weren't going to get a chance possibly at all with this character if it was something you really wanted. So it is something I've signed up for, kind of. Um, my character's not too happy. I'm a bit like, as long as it doesn't interfere too much with the rest of my role playing, I can get on with the other things I want to do in character great. Obviously, if it seems like it's become a, a huge burden that's destroying my game, which unfortunately happened to uh, one of our other friends who ended up killing off her character purely to escape an in-character uh, assignment that she'd been given then then hopefully it'll all work out and we'll find out at the next event but that's enough of the whining the the good stuff all the good stuff out of character i would just like to say a huge thank you to barry's mom and co the catering company that we were using barry is one of the head guys who's not actually on the plot team anymore but he was for years and years of the faction and he's managed to rope in his mom to help cater the events recently as a volunteer basis which means we don't have to pay for caterers which means faction funds can be used on better awesome stuff like hiring better venues investing in the monster kit and stuff like that and these lovely 80 year olds or 80 somethings uh irish women basically spent the whole of the events in the kitchen slaving away on everybody's food and they were amazing about it they were nice to everyone the food was amazing and filling and hot and just what you needed and you know to do this out of the goodness of their hearts to go i think they were actually in bunks which to be fair i don't begrudge them in any way because they desperately deserved it and i would feel really bad if they had to go out and like properly camp after putting all that work in for us for free so they were amazing and just a huge thank you and everyone should thank them and be nice to them um, which unfortunately in my knots there were a couple people that weren't those people are dicks if you know who you are don't be dicks it was like in the rules the event the only rule be nice to Barry's mom seriously but yes they were amazing they took loads of people's weird um, dietary requirements into account and went out of their way to do F for people just just amazing so you can see I've got a huge smile on my face just even talking about it I got loads of great role play done. It was a fairly quiet and subdued event. In a lot of respects, in and out of character for various reasons that I mentioned. There's lots of players that had died. Oh, sorry, lots of characters that had died. Everyone was wet. There's a few players that had to go home. So I got some really great role play, as I mentioned about my friend's plot line. That was really great and intense. Doing all the stuff around deciding to step up. Emma got hit with the plot stick in the face. She was monitoring but they got her to go in character for half an hour on the Sunday morning purely so she could be hit round the face with a plot stick and the angst and the drama and the woe and oh so many lols about that. There was lots of funny fantastic moments and good times to be had especially sit in the tea room and um, some of people's costumes because it's the first time we've seen them this year have been amazing whether that's been upgrades or a whole new kit. Some of the stuff is fantastic. The aniseed vodka I'd made for the event went down really well, especially with the people that are like, yay, aniseed! So much so that I put the rest of the vodka bottle to good use and the next batch is all finished and the special bottle is 
going on its way to the person that loved it the most. As I mentioned, I worked on an in-character cloak whilst in character. So there were times I sat, stick the crochet hook in bits and pieces and run around the fields after plot stuff happened and hope I didn't lose anything. And to be fair, I did pretty well because I had the balls of yarn in my in character bag, crochet hook in the end of the cloak. I lost the crochet hook once and I found it again and the yarn only fell out of my bag once and did not get too disgusting and covered in mud. And to be fair, you know, kit like that needs breaking in. I got to learn quite a bit in character about um, the way rituals work and the way that they're being assigned this year. Uh, I don't know how much input I will have into the decision making process this year as I'm not actually a ritualist. My character is able to contribute to them. I'll probably do another episode at some point that goes step by step at what rituals actually are. But if I can find one I will link to some sort of a video of of an actual ritual being performed in LT. They are things that happen at the mainline events and basically they are things you do to get special shiny stuff. Also a big heart, as well as the actual joy of staying in a hotel, which is so being clever that I'm going to do it in all events forever until the point where I have an actual caravan or a camper van where the, the warm will travel move me. Our hotel was actually, as well as being like 10 minutes away from the site, was actually just next to a Toby Carvery, so both mornings we had all you could eat breakfast there and we were able to do that before going on site so that we weren't in the breakfast queue and dealing with trying to get the monsters fed and everything like that. And whilst I said, as I said, uh, Barry's Mum Catering Corpse was awesome, it was nice to have that little bit of a break and deal with that before getting on site. Because this was the first time we've had quite a few of all our characters together, we actually got some bits and pieces done in terms of the plot lines and stuff for our group and like where we want to go for the next year. It was great to catch up with everyone, especially the Irish lot who obviously living in Ireland don't get to see very often. And um, more than anything else, it's just got me so keen for the next year. The winter is always a lull period for LARP and it's now just kind of kicked my ass into gear about getting kit finished and just getting excited for the events that are coming up. We've got two events coming in May, so should be fantastic. Uh, thank you for putting up with my rambly little hot and not. Sorry for the delay. There should be a collab video over on the wife's channel. Hopefully I'm pointing in the direction it's going to appear. And hopefully the next video is going to be a make for all you guys. 